Hello, how's it going? Um, sorry for the late start today. Um, let's see, are you guys hearing me? I'm trying to make sure if I have my volume on. Oh, Sally, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Marilyn, can you hear me? Yes? <laughs> Not sure if you guys can hear me. Um, anyway, uh, Yes, it's been a busy morning. So, Sally, Marilyn, Grace, Jane, thanks so much for joining me this morning and giving me a little bit of extra time. Um, yeah, kind of a crazy morning. I decided to, oh, Mo, she just grabbed my cord. <laughs> I decided to last night to try a new bread recipe and when you're ever making a new recipe, <laughs> things don't always go as quickly as you think they will. So my my bread just came out of the oven. I'm wondering if you guys want to see it. Do you guys want to see my loaf of bread that just came out of the oven? I'm going to take that as a yes because I think everyone is excited about bread as I am. So give me a second here. I'm going to grab my phone. We're going to walk over to the kitchen and you can see my loaf of bread. This is my first, um, it's a light whole wheat. So there it is, gorgeous as ever. I'm very excited about it, you see that? Oh my goodness. So it's a little bit darker than I'm normal, that I'm used to, and so maybe that's the, the whole wheat. So um, yeah, we're gonna see what happens. So that happened this morning. Um, I was up stretching and folding and rising at, oh gosh, I don't know, six, 15 or something. I got to figure out how to get this back on here. Hold on a second. Not the easiest thing in the world. Oh my goodness. Okay, we did it. We did it. All right. So yeah, baking bread, that takes some time. And then also I, we, we just, yeah, we got a new floor in our bathroom this weekend. Our landlords put one in. Yay, it's beautiful. We love it. Um, so putting the whole bathroom back together and then making hand pies with my daughter. Um, when was that? Sunday night, I think. Yes, Sunday night. And oh my goodness, they are amazing. Now, there's only one left, but I wanted to show you guys it. This is like the reject one because... It was all the extra dough, and so it doesn't look as pretty, but man, that thing is just so flaky and wonderful. Do you guys remember, like a bit into it, and I was like, wow, this like takes me back to my childhood. Like when I used to go to McDonald's and get um, those apple pies, you know, but like, a hundred times better. <laughs> so we have just discovered ham pies. Um, I've never made anything like this before. Honestly, I don't even really make pies. Um, this is a little secret about me is that I actually didn't eat bread or flour for like 10 years. And, um, just last September, so like a year ago, um, my husband and I went to Croatia. I think you guys remember that trip. And the trip was amazing. And when you're in Croatia though, like there's no, um, there's like nothing to eat there except for bread. Like it's just pizza and sub sandwiches and bread. Like there's just bread everywhere. And so like the second day of the trip, it was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. So I just kind of said, whatever, I don't care. Um, my stomach's probably gonna hurt this whole vacation, but you know the crazy thing is, it didn't. And somebody said, you know, the flour they use over there is probably different than the flour they use in the US and blah, blah, blah. And so I ate bread to my heart's content and loved every second of it. And then we came home and I went back to my normal gluten-free eating because I was sure that um, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a good thing. Well, I don't know what 
gave me the idea, but I decided to just try something and I was totally fine. And then somebody told me this whole thing about these good bacteria that you can get when you are traveling in other places of the world. And I thought, oh my goodness, I think maybe I got this good bacteria that is helping my stomach. So hence, sourdough bread, pizza, hand pies, <laughs> pretty, really fun. Now I must say that because I'm consuming all this bread, I do have to be a little bit more active than I normally have had to be. So that is pretty fun. <laughs> The other thing that I just started, which is super interesting to me, is I am making homemade kombucha. <laughs> My sister started it, uh, I don't know, months ago. And so just a couple weeks ago, we got together and I brought her a sourdough starter and she brought me some scobies, that's what they're called, scobies, in the kombucha and we swapped. And so now I'm making kombucha. We have these little jars of kombucha in our refrigerator. Um, and it's just this fizzy drink that is really good probiotics for your body. And so here's my next little um, Carolyn Ingalls <laughs> thing. I don't think she, I, maybe she did make kombucha. I don't know. Anyway, pretty fun. That's what I've been up to. Very, very uh, full week. Um, I must say that the prairie dolls are flying off the shelves. I've got like four or five of these little Laura dolls that are going out today. Oh, and also a Laura and a Mary over there. Um, yeah, and books and wagons. And so if you are wanting to get those before Christmas, just get them in now because I have to make these, like hand make them. So when I run out, it takes a week or two for me to make another batch of them. And then also the wagons my mom makes in Texas. And so she usually sends me a batch, but that's a couple weeks lead time too. So anyway, that is, um, there's my little infomercial so that we don't get crazy before the holidays. So um, anyway, we are talking today about highs and lows and um, I know that a lot of you are um, going through highs and lows right now. And I have a prayer jar over there in the corner that I pray for you guys. And I try to pray for, over this jar every single day. And I get emails from you saying, pray, pray for me, pray for this, pray for my friend, um, pray for my heart, you know, whatever. And so I've been praying for you guys and I know that you guys are going through highs and lows. I'm going through highs and lows. And so our chapter for today just happens to be highs and lows. And this is from season one, episode five. The episode is The Love of Johnny Johnson. And I love this episode, it's great. And you know, the funniest thing is, is that I so relate to Laura in this episode because when I was young, it seemed that every boy that I had a crush on, my sister did too. and she didn't even try and the boys would flock to her. And I just remember like the very first boy that I had a crush on, I was in fourth grade and I remember thinking, oh wow, he's so amazing. Fourth graders shouldn't be thinking that. I know, I know, I was a little boy crazy. Anyway, um, I just remember always feeling like I could never do anything to get their attention. You know, I was just this little girl, you know. And that happened several times until my twin sister um, started dating her husband when she was 14, and then that wasn't a problem anymore, <laughs> which was great. <laughs> but yeah, I totally remember this whole, that whole feeling of like, Laura just says like, it hurts too much to love, I never wanna love, or whatever it was, it's really funny. Carolyn Ingalls always knows the right thing to say, doesn't she? And her response is, you mustn't be afraid to hurt because that is part of life. Hurt is something you measure happiness by. It's like valleys and mountain peaks. Without them both, the world would be flat and uninteresting. <laughs> so here we go. Life can be unbelievably heartbreaking. Sadness is all around us. The hurts of this world are deep and painful. 
mothers who won't meet their babes, families torn apart by divorce, and cancer taking the lives of those we love. Hurricanes and fires and shootings. Why does it often seem that the valleys plunge deeper than the mountains are high? Why do the valleys plunge deeper than the mountains are high? Hmm. Feels like that at times, doesn't it? It feels like that to me too. I've had my share of tough times. You may have an unimaginable story of pain. While we all experience difficulties, I find myself assuming life is supposed to be smooth and predictable. This couldn't be further from the truth. The world is not one big flat prairie. It's a tempting thought, but Ma convinces Laura otherwise. Every hurt is a valley resting in the shadows of a great mountain peak. God's best work has taken place during my most challenging times. When I have nowhere else to turn, God walks beside me and makes me stronger. Maybe our valleys exist to reveal how desperately we need him. Persevering through trials produces endurance to help us reach the mountain peak. And overwhelmed with gratitude, our hearts soar as we look back at the trail we've blazed. Now I can find the hidden joy in the reflections of the difficulties of my life, all the hard, beautiful gifts he's allowed me to experience. We can be thankful for the good and the bad, grateful for his presence in the valleys and up on the heights. God repeatedly surprises us with a beautiful landscape of various highs and lows. As Carolyn said, life will never be all prairie. We wouldn't want it to be. The valleys make the mountain peaks even more breathtaking. And the verses from James 1, 2, and 3, and it says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Crazy. Yes. Don't bark, Mo. She looks like she's going to start barking. It's okay. <laughs> Highs and lows. Um, you know, it's crazy. That verse, Consider it all joy, Two weeks after I had brain surgery, I spoke at a youth conference and the title of my talk was Considered All Joy. How do you have joy in the midst of trials? How do you have joy when you are stuck in a valley? <laughs> it's hard. It's life won't ever be smooth and flat. And I don't think we want it to be. So. It's funny because this morning I got up and I got on my computer and I started writing a new chapter of my book. And it was all about um, this time when I went backpacking. And the trip turned out to be a little different than what we thought. And um, we ended up kind of trailblazing a new path home. And I wonder what it looks like for you to trailblaze, to have the courage to step off that road that everyone's walking on, how to be courageous even when others aren't, and how to be kind when others aren't. That's even trailblazing a new path is doing something out of the normal, the out of the status quo. And um, yeah, so we'll see how that chapter ends up. But um, I just wonder, I think there's a part in here that says, you look back, our hearts, oh, overwhelmed with gratitude, our hearts soar as we look back at the trail we've blazed a new path, a new place to walk, a new adventure, a new trial, a new challenge. It could be whatever, but when you look back at that trailblazing experience, like for me, it was this backpacking trip, and now it's like one of the most amazing memories ever, and we really didn't think we were gonna make it out of there, you know? 
<laughs> so um, that's what I'm gonna leave with you today. Um, I wonder if any of you have a trailblazing experience that you'd want to share with me. Maybe a uh, trip that went wrong or maybe just a shift in perspective. Um, that's all part of the highs and lows of life. So I do know that someone just asked if I had a recipe for the hand pies. And I will say that I got the recipe from the Magnolia Journal, the fall edition. And there's minor apple, but there's recipes for um, like a pear, a like cinnamon sugar pecan, a cherry, uh, whatever. I actually want to maybe figure out a filling that would be some kind of pumpkin. I think that would be really fun and maybe serve them at Thanksgiving. So um, yes, that is from the Magnolia Journal Fall Edition magazine and it's right over there but I won't get up and get it <laughs> so that's me today I hope you guys are doing great I hope you are navigating these highs and lows that you're going through um, you know I think sometimes like every day feels like up and downs you know like you're doing good and then all of a sudden it's like oh my goodness and then so stick with it you're gonna be okay um, if you are a person of faith, hold on to God and he won't leave you. And, um, yeah. All right. I love all of you guys and, um, I hope you have a really great day. Julie just asked, what's the title of the book that I'm reading right now? That I'm reading? The title of the book that I'm reading right now. I'm reading a book called, oh, I just finished it. The Ringmaster's Wife by Christy Cambron. That's the book that I just finished. It's about the Ringling Brothers Circus. Um, yeah. There you go. I love you guys all. Have a good day. Okay, bye.